What's up, dude? Today we have a interesting story. Um, it's not necessarily murder, but it is very interesting, and I think you guys will really get a kick out of this one. And it is a little bit more of a mainstream one. I don't do these um, too terribly often, so you guys have probably heard of this one. I wouldn't be surprised if you have, but even if you have, I'm, I I don't know what that means, but uh, maybe you'll still find this interesting. Also, if you guys hear that noise in the background, that is in fact my dogs both chewing on bones. So we have that to listen to. Tara Calico was a 19 year old sophomore at the University of New Mexico. She lived in Bellin, New Mexico, and at 9.30 a.m. on September 20th, 1988, Tara left her home to go on her routine 34 mile bike ride. I cannot imagine going on a bike ride that long, so huge props to her. She must have been either super athletic or just really loved to ride bike. She rode a neon pink huffy bike that had yellow control cables. Her normal route was on the sidewalks along Highway 47. Typically, her and her mom, Patty Dowell, would take the same route. However, there was an incident where a car drove aggressively close to her, Patty, deliberately passing her multiple times so she didn't feel like going out as much. Tara still wanted to. She still went on the rides and refused her mom's suggestion that she carry mace um now this particular morning when she went on out on a bike ride her mom was you know cautioning her to be careful and whatnot and tara was just kind of jokingly was like oh yeah if i'm not home by 12 like make sure you call the cops because she had a 12 30 tennis date with her boyfriend and she didn't want to miss it so she just kind of jokingly said it in passing around 11 30 was the last time that she was witnessed on the sidewalk there reportedly had been a pickup that was very closely following her, and when Tara didn't get back home around noon, her mom and stepdad, John, went out to try to find her themselves. Remember what Tara had said, so they, you know, took that seriously, thankfully. After the search party, or excuse me, after the search came up empty, Patty and John put together a search party and began a full-scale search of the area. Patty found Tara's Walkman about 100 yards off the highway. The Walkman was found in an area where it looked like there had been a scuffle and there were footprints leading to that area. And there was also um, bike tracks found nearby also, so that also made them think that, that this could have been Tara. Between 1988 and 1989, there had been several reported um, sightings of Terra in the U.S. but n or in the southern U U.S. But none of them were confirmed. One was someone thought that a girl looked like Terra and a man sitting together at a tram station, and um, so that got called in. That was one of them. But it, you know, it's like nothing came up of these sightings. And honestly, just having a witness say hey so so and so looks like tara you know maybe you should go check it out it's kind of like what do you do with that you know you go i'm sure the cops go they look around they try to find somebody matching that description maybe talk to them but i mean that's just a hard situation but it is awesome that people do call in these tips and they can be incredibly helpful so if you see something for sure say something i'm just saying sometimes these can be very very hard to go off of Neither Tara or her bike were ever found, and the case remained unsolved. A woman in Port, Port St. Joe, Florida, made a routine trip to a convenience store in her neighborhood on June 15, 1989, so a year later after Tara went missing. St. Joe is about 1,200 miles from Bellin, where Tara lived. When she got this woman, when she got out of her car, she noticed a white van in the parking space next to her. She took note of it, but continued into the store. While she was walking back to her car, she saw a Polaroid photo lying face down next to the white van. The photo showed a teen girl and a young boy seemingly with their hands tied behind their backs and black tape over their mouths. It looked like the photo had been taken in the van. The woman immediately took the photo to the police and national media outlets ran hundreds of stories about the photo, which is amazing. Amazing. Tara's parents saw, saw one of the stories that were ran and got in touch with the authorities in Florida. Michael Henley's parents also recognized their own son in the photo as well. 
On April 21st, 1988, so almost exactly five months before Tara went missing, nine-year-old Michael Henley Jr. had gone on a camping trip with his dad and a family friend in the Zuni Mountains located in New Mexico. The three of them had been at the campsite for less than 20 minutes when Michael went missing. His dad and the family friend tried searching for him, but they couldn't find him and figured that he had just wandered off. I mean, if he's a nine-year-old boy and going camping, the forest is like the most exciting thing ever. There's so many things to see, to hear. So honestly, I'm sure that, that they didn't think much of it maybe at first, or maybe it just like he snuck off, you know, silently, and it just took him a second to realize that he wasn't there anymore. Michael's family, the National Guard, and police conducted a month-long search for him, but they found no trace of Michael Jr. Around that time, a snowstorm hit the area, which of course made the search more difficult. It covers up and gets rid of a lot of potential evidence. That's pretty much where this case went cold until the woman found the photo a year later. Factory analysts concluded that the photo had recently been taken, you know, upon that woman finding it. The FBI still have not been able to determine that the kids in the photo are Tara and Michael. A forensic artist compared the photo to them and is 85% sure that it's them in the photo. Now jumping ahead a year after this photo is found, in 1990, Michael's remains had been found a few miles away from the campsite that he was at with his dad and friend. Authorities don't believe that he was a victim of kidnapping or foul play, but rather that he died from prolonged exposure after getting lost in the forest. In 2003, Patty and John moved to Florida, probably because that's where the photo of Tara had been found and that maybe the chances of going there would help them find her or just keep her story alive, um, maybe act on tips themselves. Like there's just, I don't know, maybe, you know, if, if there was a chance that like, say someone I loved it was reported being sighted in a certain area. Honestly, I would spend a lot of time there trying to find out what happened myself or trying to find them. I know it sounds crazy, but when you lose someone that you love, I mean, I'm sure you'll just try to do anything that you can to find answers. And being in that area maybe makes finding answers a little bit easier or more likely. Sadly, Patty passed away in 2006, and Tara's bio dad passed away in 2002. John, however, is still alive and actively trying to find Tara. In the years since her disappearance, more photos have popped up, but it's unconfirmed whether or not it really is Tara. When I say more photos, I mean one. There was one more photo that popped up, but, you know, they can't confirm that it's Tara. However, in the very first photo, it... I mean, I see why people think that that's her because it really does look like it could be Tara. Investigators announced that they no longer think that she is the girl in the photo and they believe that Tara was most likely killed the day she disappeared in 1988. In 2013, Henry Brown made a deathbed confession to the police. He claims that shortly after Tara went missing, he was in the basement of a guy named Lawrence Romero Jr. While he was there, he noticed what looked like a young woman's body wrapped up in a blue tarp and buried in a makeshift grave. Lawrence, another man, Dave Silva, and a third man told Henry that the body was Tara's. Lawrence, Dave, and the other man, who was never named, were in a pickup with a man named Leroy Chavez when he, they noticed Tara riding her bike. Now, I, I don't know exactly how old these guys were when this happened, but I do believe that they were a little bit older than Tara, but around the same age as her. They were trying to get her attention when they accidentally hit her with the pickup. So they abducted her and took her to a grave pit and raped her. She was still alive. When Tara threatened to go to the police, Leroy st stabbed her to death while the other men held her down. Originally, they hid her body in a bush nearby, but as searches started, they moved her to the basement. Henry said that the men threatened to kill him if he ever went to the police or told anybody what he knew. He claims that they got away with the crime because Lawrence's dad was the sheriff at the time. Apparently, Lawrence Romero Sr. found a note note written by Lawrence Jr. confessing to Tara's murder, but 
Lawrence Sr. destroyed it. However, since Tara's body hadn't been found, no charges have been um, charged, and the disappearance remains unsolved to this day. And nobody knows what happened to Tara. It really is crazy. I honestly, I don't have any like guesses as to what happened. I, I mean, other than she had been kidnapped, but other than that, I mean, they don't have suspects. They don't have any idea who could have possibly done it. They thought that maybe Michael would be a lead, but then here he was found. And he, so that wasn't a lead to really anything. You know, I mean, the chances of finding two victims of somebody are maybe a little bit better. I'm just thinking like, you know, probability and odds. I don't know. I really, I, I, I don't have a ton of reason to believe that other than it just seems like, you know, it's a little bit easier to try to find two of something than only one of something, but I don't know. So other than that, that is it for me today. I hope that you guys enjoy these longer videos. I'm trying very hard to find longer cases. And as of right now, while I'm getting into the groove of this, it is going to take me just a little bit longer to get videos out. They might be towards the end of the day. I'm trying to get back to my 7 a.m. Uh, routine but switching things up and we're trying to make it more interesting so it's just going to be a little bit of a learning curve thank you guys for watching though and comment down below any cases that you think would be interesting for me to talk about or just honestly comment your thoughts on this case that would be interesting but other than that i will see you guys back here tomorrow bye guys